Hi gang, Scott here. I've got some tips and tricks for you about Lightroom's overlay modes for their masking tools. These are some new options we have with the latest masking incarnation from Lightroom. I've done a separate video about the masking tools themselves. I'll put a link in the show notes, something popping up over here. You can check that out if you haven't seen it yet. This video is about the overlay modes and one in particular that I find myself using most often. Before I dive in, I wanted to make you aware that I host a photography podcast. If you're the kind of person that likes podcasts, I want you to check out the Stop Down Photography Podcast. This is uh, different than what I do on YouTube here. It's more about uh, exploring the, the art side of things and, and more inspirational or why do we do certain things? Why do we pursue certain types of photography? You know, here on YouTube, it's gonna continue to be tips, tricks, technique, a lot with software. But if you're looking for something a little different, you'd like my style of presentation, check out that podcast. I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, let's take a look at these mask overlay modes. I'll use this photo here as an example because I have a bunch of different masks applied to it. Let me get our masking box open here. And uh, the first overlay that we're familiar with or most familiar with is the color overlay. So when I hover over, let's say I hover over mask three here, we see this color overlay show up on the area that we have masked. And you know, we have control over that color in our, our color area here, these colors, how strong that is, and whether or not the overlay affects or shows the affected area, the things we have masked or the things we have not masked. You know, uh, you're applying the changes to a certain area or not. And the default is affected area. That's how I like to work where my mask is showing me what I've changed and you know, how I've changed it based on the sliders. And the, uh, the shift O key, I'm pressing shift and pressing O, we can cycle through the different colors. And for, you can see in the uh, mask pop up the toolbar there, the panel, those different colors are showing up there. Well, there's another overlay option. And you'll notice here I'm hovering over this mask. You saw the photo kind of went into a black and white mode. Well, that's this different overlay we have for how does the mask not only show up, but what does it do to the image behind it? Now in the masking panel and also down in your toolbar, if you have your toolbar turned on, you'll see overlay mode. I'll pop that open really quick here. Overlay mode, these things are all here. There's six different kinds. Those are also available right here in the triple dot menu in the masks panel. And you can cycle through these using Alt on Windows or Option on Mac OS with O. So everything's O with overlays, right? We have the Option O, and I'll start to see, let me get our, our mask selected, turn on that mask, and we'll see Option O. Things change, right? We go through a whole slew of variations of what's going on. Now, let me cycle all the way around. This is the default, right? We get a color overlay. So our image is what our image is. And then there's this color overlay. And in some cases, depending on the image you're working with, uh, the color is kind of hard to see. So um, one of the things that you can do, if you like the color overlay, that's the closest to our, our previous incarnations, go into the color swatch and you can choose a custom color, something like you know magenta, where you know I like magenta because it would not appear in nature. I can push this really far and now it's clear to me that great that's where my overlay is. I go before and after. Wonderful. The, uh, the little glitch with this if I do my shift O to cycle through colors it's gone again and so it was a temporary thing right and I, I go back in here and it's gone again so that's um that's a little bit of a problem because I don't want to keep going in and setting this color all the time so um, that has started to fall short for me. The mode I like to use now is color overlay on black and white. And what that does is you see that the photo is turned into a black and white and the area that I have affected has this color overlay. So that is my, my favorite one, but let's go through the rest of them now. I'm gonna use the Option O key on the Mac this is image on black and white. Now this one's hard to see with this mask. Let me choose a different mask. This one here, okay? And I'll hover over that. Image on black and white. So what we see is the image, our photo, that is the area that's 
affected, right? That's where I'm affecting things. And the black and white area is kind of the area of the mask that is unaffected, right? You can see on this mask swatch, I am removing some of these uh, changes from the center and only applying them outside of this elliptical. If I go to this one here, it's the opposite, right? I'm doing something on the inside. And I'm sorry, something on the yeah, something on the inside and then not doing anything on the outside. So the black and white area is unaffected, and the image, the image that we're working with, is where you're applying these changes. Go on to the next one. We have image on black. A little more obvious, honestly. I like this one as a, as a secondary, so we can see the area of our image we can view. That is where things are being applied. Image on white, same idea. And then, of course, the classic, I just want to see the mask itself. You know, it's like the big version of the thumbnail over there. So again, the Option or Alt key with O to cycle through all of these overlay modes. And I find that I'm landing most often on color overlay with black and white. I find this to be especially useful when I'm working with things that are like luminosity masks or range masks where the mask is more intricate. It's not just a big gradient or a big radial. There's nuance to it. And the black and white part just fades away. It's very obvious to see the color overlay. What am I affecting? So that is everything about overlay modes in Lightroom. So to recap this along with the keystrokes here, first we have the O key that will toggle off and on the overlay. You can either see the overlay or hide the overlay. Shift O will cycle through the color of the overlay and it will show you by default the area that's affected. You can change that to show the unaffected area. Uh, I prefer to keep that as the affected area. What area of the image am I changing with the sliders? So Shift O will cycle through the colors, red, green, black, white for the overlay, and you can set a custom color. And there's Option O or Alt O on Windows to go through a cycle of overlay changes to the image. So the image can remain the same as a color image. The image can be made black and white, and then you only see the colored area being the area affected by the mask. And there's some other options there as well for the image to just go, go to black, go to white, or see a classic black and white mask view. So lots of options there. I find myself using that color overlay with a black and white image. That works best for me. But now you've got all the information you need to choose what's best for you. Hope you found the video useful. Any questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.